one very important method of integration of certain types of functions is the method of partial fraction decomposition. There are many integration problems, not necessarily of the types that are called partial fractions, which get resolved when partial fractions are used. And so it's important to study this technique where we integrate after we decompose the partial fractions. Well, what are partial fractions in the first place? Partial fractions are, strictly speaking, rational functions of the type, suppose I have px, px is a partial fraction if it can be written as fx over gx, where the degree of fx is strictly less than the degree of gx. Don't tell me you don't know what the degree of a polynomial is. The degree of a polynomial is the highest power of x that you can find inside that polynomial, which is not multiplied by the coefficient 0. Of course, if the coefficient is 0, then that power of x doesn't count. And so, if we have fx and gx as two polynomial functions, then fx over gx is called a partial fraction if and only if the degree of fx is less than the degree of gx. Well, do you want to see some examples on this? First example, x squared plus 7 divided by x plus 1 x minus 8, x plus 4. This is an example of a partial fraction. How come? Well, the degree of the numerator here is 2, and the degree of the denominator, well, we see three factors which are multiplied by each other. There are three linear factors, but then there are three linear factors which are multiplied by each other, and this makes their degree equal to the degree that you get after you multiply out this and simplify. So we have three linear factors multiplied by each other. So obviously x cube is going to be the highest power of x after you multiply them out. Therefore, the degree of the denominator is one more than the degree of the numerator in this function. And therefore, it would qualify to be defined as a partial fraction. What else? x minus 2 x minus 3 divided by x cubed minus 1. This also qualifies to be a partial fraction. There are many examples possible where we can define polynomial functions such that there's one polynomial in the numerator by another polynomial in the denominator with the polynomial in the numerator having the degree 1 or 2 or more than 2 degrees less than that of the denominator. Moreover, it's not necessary that all the quadratic or cubic polynomials that you have, either on the numerator or denominator, might be factorizable. You could also have unfactorizable quadratics, unfactori unfactorizable uh, cubics, unfactorizable biquadratics, and so on. So it's not always necessary that you would be able to resolve some of the partial fractions into factors of smaller degrees but then they still qualify as partial fractions. So in the following table, I'll show you how to decompose partial fractions into smaller units, the smallest possible units. Let's go take a look. The following table, which uh, you will get quite easily on the net, gives you a knowledge of all there is to know about partial fractions. It shows two columns and it is also simple to follow and understand. It shows two simple columns, a factor in the denominator and the right column, term in partial fraction, decomposition. So if we have ax plus b only, x is the variable in this table. If ax plus b is part of the denominator, then you write the term in the partial fraction decomposition as a over ax plus b. Well, what if you have cx plus d? multiplied by ax plus b, well, then you write another constant b divided by cx plus d, 
where of course C and D are different from A and B. What if you have a third? Then you just keep adding terms like this. Second rule, if just one of the terms AX plus B is not raised to the power of one like we have here, but it is raised to some non-unity power. Well, then you add as many terms as there are powers. For example, if AX plus B is cubed, then we have A1 by AX plus B plus A2 by AX plus B the whole square plus A3 by AX plus B the whole cube. So these will be three terms which need to be there in order to be able to cover the presence of three factors which are multiplied by each other, three identical factors which are multiplied by each other. And so the general rule would be that AX plus B to the power of K involves splitting the partial fraction to K terms, each of which has a different power of AX plus B in the denominator. All right, next factor in the denominator, the third rule. If we have AX squared plus BX plus C, which is a non-factorizable quadratic factor in the denominator, then we don't write just a constant, we write the constant multiplied by X plus B divided by AX squared plus BX plus C. This is to compensate for the fact that there are two powers of X, two different powers of X in the denominator. And therefore, when we split into partial fractions, we should also get square powers of x so that the powers of x get balanced out and we get the proper splitting of the partial fraction. And fourth rule, extension of the third rule, or generalization of the third rule, is that ax square plus bx plus c being a non-factorizable quadratic factor is raised to a power of k, then the decomposition involves as many different terms as there are different powers of x. So if ax squared plus bx plus c is squared, then you would require to split the partial uh, split the partial fraction into two terms, a1x plus b1 by ax squared plus bx plus c, added to a2x plus b2 divided by ax squared plus bx plus c, the whole square. And that is all that you require to solve most of the partial fraction questions that you have in your secondary school mathematics.